Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be adding a blog application to our Django site and also setting up some URL routes so that we can start directing people to pages that we'd like them to see. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's create a blog app for our site. Now, a lot of people might get confused at this part and think to yourself, well, didn't we already create an app? So the thinking behind Django here is that you have your website project, which we've already created. And then within that website, you can have multiple apps that are all their own thing. So for example, we can have a blog section of our website and that will be its own app. And then we could have like a store section of our website and that will be its own app. So a single project can contain multiple apps. And we'll see later in the series that this is a good thing for separating out different parts of our project. And another nice thing is that you can take a single app and add it to multiple projects. So let's say that you really like the blog part of your application, then you can simply drop that app into multiple websites. So hopefully that makes sense. And I think it will make more sense once we see this in action. So let's create our blog app within our project. So currently I'm in our project in the same directory as our manage.py file, and we're going to use that to create a new app. So we can just say Python, whoops, let me click on here. So we can say Python manage.py, and then start app is the command to create a new app. And now the name of our app, and we want this name to be blog. So I'll run that. And once that's run, let me clear the terminal here so that we can see the structure that we just created. Okay, so now let me use that same tree command that I used in the last video to print out our project structure now that we've created that app. And again, you might not have this command installed, uh, but don't worry if you don't, I just installed it so that we could see this layout a little bit larger. So I will run tree. And now let me see if we can see this all in one screen here. So yeah, so we can barely fit all that in. Okay, so we already went over the structure of the Django project in the first video. So that was the manage.py file and the Django project directory here. Uh, so nothing changed there. But now we have this new blog directory uh, with its own structure. And that blog directory is what that start app command created. Now, this is what can intimidate some people about getting started with Django because we really haven't done any coding yet. And there are already so many different files that have been created from the start project and the start app commands. So if anyone has watched my Flash series, then this might be intimidating compared to a framework like that because we have so many more files that we're starting out with before we even start doing any coding. But even though those commands created a lot of these files, we're going to get so much more out of the box than what we got with a smaller framework like Flask. So there's definitely a trade-off there. So instead of going over all of these right now, uh, let's just go ahead and get a view created so that we can actually write some code and see some progress. Uh, but don't worry, we'll be exploring some of these other files that were created pretty soon. So the first module that we're gonna open up is this views.py module within the blog directory. So now I'm going to open up my sublime text and open up that views.py file. And again, that views.py file is within the blog app directory that we just created. And we can see that it already has an import here at the top. So it's already imported render for us. And we'll use that in just one second. But for now, I'm also going to import HTTP response and that's from Django HTTP. So I will say from Django.http import HTTP response. And now I'm going to create a new function here and I'm going to call this function home. And this function is going to handle the traffic from the home page of our blog. And this function is going to take in a request argument. We aren't going to be using the request variable just yet, but we need to add it in order to just get our function to work. And within this function, we're simply going to return what we want the user to see when they're sent to this route. So this is where the logic goes for how we want to handle certain routes. So I'll create this function and that is called home. And like I said, this takes a request argument that we're not gonna use right now, but it has to be there. So for now, we're simply going to return an HTTP response uh, that says that we've landed on the blog homepage. So I will return an HTTP response and I will just make this an H1 tag. So I'll say H1 blog home and then close out that H1 tag. Okay, so like I said, this is the logic for how we want to handle when a user goes to our blog homepage, but we haven't actually mapped our URL pattern to this view function just yet. So to do this, we're going to create a new bot module in our blog directory called urls.py. And then that file is where we'll map the URLs that we want to correspond to each view function. So let's do that now. 
So within our blog app directory, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this urls.py. Now this URLs module is gonna be very similar to the URLs module that we saw in our Django project. So if I open up the project level URLs pi file, then we can see that they have uh, imported this path here, and then they have a list of URL patterns that are using those paths. And we're gonna do something very similar. So I'm going to copy uh, this import of the path from Django URLs, and I'm gonna paste this into our blog URLs module. And I'm also going to copy those URL patterns. So I will copy that and paste that into our blog urls.py file as well. Now we're also going to be using this home view function here within our URLs. Uh, so what we're going to do is import this views.py module within our URLs. So I'll say from dot, which is the current directory, import views, and I'll save that. So now let's create a path for our blog homepage. Now, right now this says admin, and that is the view that gets run when we go to forward slash admin. But if we want this to be the homepage, then we can just leave this as an empty path. And now we wanna specify the view that we want to handle the logic at that homepage route. And we want that to be our home view from our views module. So we'll say views.home. And now I'm also gonna put in a name for this path. So I'll na say name is equal to blog dash home. Okay, so we have an empty path and the views.home is the function that we created in the views that just returns that HTTP response that we are on the blog page. And you might be wondering why I put the name as blog dash home instead of just home. And that's because there will be times that we want to do a reverse lookup on this route. And naming this something as generic as home could collide with other app routes. Uh, so if I had a store app, then maybe they have an app that has a home route also. So I'd wanna be clear with the actual naming of this path. Okay, so now we have the URL path for our blog homepage mapped to our home function in the views file, but this still wouldn't work quite yet. Because if you remember, we have a URLs module in our main project directory also, and that URLs module will tell our whole website which URLs uh, should send us to our blog app. Now that might sound confusing, but let's just pull this up so we can see this in action. So now I'm opening, opening my projects urls.py file. And like we've seen before, uh, we already have one route here of this admin that gets mapped to these admin site URLs. So we're going to do the same thing, but instead we're going to tell Django which route should get mapped to our blog URLs. So we're just going to need to import another function from Django URLs, and that is going to be the include function. So up here from Django URLs, we also want to import include. And now we can add to our list of URL patterns to specify which route should go to our blog URLs. So I will add on to this and I will, let me just copy this path here and paste this in. So I'll say that if we go to blog, then we should now reference our blog URLs. And to do that, we'll use that include function that we uh, imported there. And this is gonna be a string and this is gonna be blog.urls. Okay, so now when we open our web page in the browser and go to forward slash blog, then it will map that to our blog URLs. And then within our blog URLs, uh, we have that empty path that maps onto our uh, home view. And we'll be sure to walk through this a couple of times just to be sure that you're getting all of this correctly. Now on one other side note here, if you've watched any Django tutorials before, then you might've seen people who use regular expressions to match their paths. And that used to be how we would used to do this, but this isn't required anymore in later versions of Django. And regular expressions can be overly complicated, especially when our routes are usually gonna be pretty simple. So I think it's best just to simply do our routes the way that we're doing them here. Okay, so we've added a good bit of code so far. So let's go ahead and make sure that this works. And once we see that it does, then we'll go back through all of this and explain exactly what's going on. So let me open up my terminal and run our development server. So I'll open up the terminal here and clear the screen. And now remember to run that uh, dev server. It's python manage.py run server. And if we run that, then it says that the server is running. We have to keep that running. So now I'll open up uh, Google Chrome and reload 
localhost on port 8000. So first of all, if we go back to the root of our website, then we can see that now we get a 404 page not found error. So once we add some URL patterns, then it should no longer display the default development site like it did before. Um, so now it's just going to try to match our specific routes. So in this case, we get a 404. And if we look at the debug output down here, then we can see that within our terminal and that dev server that it also displays all of the routes that we try to access and the status code that we get. So we got a 404 there. Now back in the website, if we look at our errors here, I know this is a little small for you to see, but this is showing us all of the URL patterns that it tried to match. And it says that it tried to match against these URL patterns in this order. So first there is admin and then there is blog. And since it didn't match either of those, then it returned a 404 page not found. So now if we navigate to forward slash blog and run that, then now we can see that we got the text of blog home. And in Chrome, we can view the source of an HTML uh, by right clicking and then going to view page source. And if I do that, then we can see exactly what we returned to this route here. And we can see that this is blog home text wrapped in H1 tags, so that worked. So now let's walk through this one more time so that we can see exactly uh, what order all of this goes through. And let's also add another route to our blog uh, just to get a feel for that. So let me close down our source code here. So when we navigated to forward slash blog in our website, then it first looks in our projects urls.py module in the main project. So if I open that up, it looks in this file and it says, okay, someone navigated to forward slash blog. So do I have a pattern that matches that? And we do have a pattern that matches that. It is the second one here. So now that it matched that, it says, where do I want to send people who go to this route? Well, I wanna send them to blog.urls. Now, whenever Django encounters this include function, it chops off whatever part of the URL has matched up to that point and only sends the remaining string to the included URLs module for further processing. So in our example, it's already processed this blog part of the URL. So it's gonna get rid of that and just send what's remaining to the blog URLs. Now there's nothing remaining after we chop off blog. So it's just going to send an empty string to blog URLs. So now let's open up blog URLs and see what it searches for here. So now we're in blog URLs and now it's saying, okay, so now I just have an empty string because remember it's already processed the blog part. So now do I have a pattern in here that matches an empty route? And we do have a pattern that matches an empty route and that pattern will be handled by the uh, function views.home. So then we can navigate to our views file and view that home function. And now it comes into that home function and it simply says, okay, so now we just want to return an HTTP uh, response with an H1 tag that says blog home. So that is a walkthrough of the whole process. Uh, so now let's add another route to our blog so that we can get a feel uh, for this whole process here. So now let's add an about page for the blog. And we'll do this in the same order that we added the home page. So first within our views, we'll add a function that handles the logic for the about page. And I will just call this about. So I'll say uh, def about. Remember we have to take in a request. And then I'm just going to return an, another HTTP response. Um, so I'll copy and paste that. And instead of blog home, let's call this blog about. Okay, so now we have an about view. So now within our blog URLs module, we'll wanna set up the mapping for the path uh, and that view function. So if I open up our blog URLs, then let's add another path to our URL patterns here. And I'm just gonna copy the path that we already have for our home route and paste that in. And I want this to be about, and we'll end that with a trailing slash. And we want the about view to handle this path. So we'll say views.about. And we'll change the name of this to blog dash about. Okay, and at this point, we should be done with that route. So you might be wondering if we need to add anything to our project URLs module, but we don't need to add anything to those URL patterns because that just simply tells our website that when someone goes to the blog route to send them to our blog URLs. And then our blog URLs will handle this home and about route from there. So let's open this up in our browser and make sure that that worked.
So now if I go to our blog route, then our blog homepage still works. Now if I go to blog forward slash about, then we can see that now we have an about page that is working. And now let's walk through this one more time now that we've added this about route so that we're sure that we understand this whole process. So we've navigated to forward slash blog forward slash about. So first, it's going to check the URL patterns in our projects URLs module. So I will open up our projects URLs module. And now our application is saying, okay, somebody has navigated to forward slash blog forward slash about. Do I have any patterns that match this? And yes, I have one pat, uh, pattern that matches the forward slash blog part. So I'm going to send uh, this to blog.urls for further processing. And remember when it passes this to the blog URLs for further processing, it's going to chop off the part that it's already matched and only send the remaining string. So in this case, it chops off the blog part of the URL and passes the about string that's left to the blog URLs. So within blog URLs, now it's saying, okay, now I'm looking for a route that matches about. Do I have anything that matches about? And I do here. So what view function handles this? And it's this views.about function. So then if we go into views, then we can see that we're returning an HTTP response with this H1 tag with the text blog about. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense after we've walked through it a couple of times. Now that might seem overly complicated to jump around that much, but it's actually a good thing that the URL gets passed around like this, because if we wanted to change the route to our blog application, then we can simply change that in one place and it applies to all of those routes. So for example, let's say that we had a blog that was in development and we wanted to do some live testing on our website, but weren't ready to quite make it live yet. So we could simply go to our projects URLs file. So let me open that up here. And I could simply create a path. Instead of blog, I could change this to blog underscore dev. And with that one change, if we go back to our browser here, let me open this up. Then now in order to access my blog, I would have to go to uh, forward slash blog underscore dev. And that takes me to the home page. And to get to the about page, it's blog dev forward slash about. And that takes me to the about page. So now we can see that all of our blog routes are accessible through this blog dev route now. And I didn't even have to change anything within our actual blog application. I only changed the one uh, project path in the URL pat URLs patterns. Uh, so that's extremely useful to just be able to change that in one place uh, for your entire blog application. Okay, so just a few more things before we move on to the next topic. So first of all, you probably noticed that I've been putting trailing slashes uh, onto the end of my URL patterns. So for example, at the end of admin, we have a forward slash here and after uh, blog dev, I put a trailing forward slash there as well. Um, so why did I do that and can we leave it off? Well, I think it's a good idea to leave it there because by default, if it has a trailing slash, then Django will redirect routes uh, without a forward slash or without a trailing slash to that route uh, that has one. So both this blog dev without a trailing slash and blog dev with a trailing slash will get redirected to the blog routes. And that's usually what we want in websites so that no one ever gets confused about what routes uh, are not returning the same results. Okay, so lastly, what if we wanted our blog to actually be the home page of our entire website? So right now we have to go to blog underscore dev to get to the home page of our blog. But what if we just wanted to be able uh, to go to the home page of our website? So just localhost port 8000 is what it is right now and see the home page of our blog from there. So in order to do that, within our project URLs, we can just simply leave the path to our blog URLs empty. So I will get rid of that and save it. And by doing that, it will match the empty path in our project URLs and also the empty path in our blog URLs and just return the blog homepage. So now with that change, if we open back up our browser and just go to the root of our website, so localhost port 8000, if I run that, then now the blog homepage uh, is what we see. And if we go to just forward slash about, then we get the blog about page. So I'm gonna leave our routes like this because I wanna make our blog the homepage of our entire website, but you can add a non-empty path there in the project URLs if you'd like. Uh, that's completely up to you. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for this video. Uh, hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how basic routing is gonna be working in Django. And in the next video, 
we'll learn how to return some more complicated HTML code using templates and also how to pass variables to our templates. But if you have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.